3 a.m. scene on the side of the roadway. You got excessive tint on the windows, asleep at the wheel, you've got evidence of a crash, and you're blocking traffic at 3 a.m. Okay, that's enough to just get you arrested right there. The officer then saw his mouth full of white powder. You know, what the f***? You know, this is what you call a substance abuse problem. So let's hear what he has to say about the drug test. I look at him like, well, I, all of a sudden, now y'all want to put this shit as a random. I missed the drug test. Nobody trying to, no, nobody notify me. And it, where nobody notified me. So who can argue with that? He needs to quit doing drugs. But he's so reckless. And it's like you're either in jail or you're dead. And that's what I see all the time with drugs, you know. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. But who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your very own personal board certified criminal defense lawyer. Today, we are doing a rapper edition. We're talking about. Kodak Black. We're going to highlight he got busted for cocaine and uh, some other things. And the way he got busted was just sad, honestly. And then kind of highlight his criminal history and what does it all mean. But before we do that, this is brought to you by eSign.com. eSign.com, a very effective way to remotely do business. Let's say for the sake of argument, you are on your 10th or 12th or 15th criminal offense and you need a lawyer fast. But you can't go anywhere because you got warrants all over the place because you failed a drug test or failed to go to a drug test. Well, you're going to have to go back to your lawyer, and he's downloaded the app. He's got to get three free signatures a month. Sign it, e-sign, because e-sign a retainer is easier than being there. I use it all the time. E-sign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business. So let's, let's talk about Kodak Black here. Kodak Black was caught swallowing a mouthful of cocaine during an arrest. It never ceases to amaze me how people are unmindful of their presence on the street. If you're rolling, you shouldn't be rolling dirty. And if you're rolling dirty, you shouldn't be causing attention to yourself. Because guess what? It's very easy to get stopped by the police when you're sitting in the middle of a fucking road and you're passed out. So Kodak Black, according to police reports, was caught swallowing a mouthful of co cocaine during a traffic stop, which led to his arrest on drug charges. It was 3 a.m. First of all, what do I tell you? What do I fucking tell you? I tell you nothing good happens after midnight. Do you have to go to the after party? If you have to go to the after party, have it at your place. But do it at a place where you're not, a woman's not going to call the cops on you or the neighbors aren't going to call the cops on you. So it was 3 a.m. in the morning in Plantation, Florida, and officers <laughs> reported that his black 2019 Bentley SUV was parked with its taillights on, blocking part of the road, and when the officers approached... Window was halfway down, and he was asleep inside, blocking traffic. That's what you call probable cause to stop somebody. First of all, you don't even need probable cause. You need just reasonable, articulable suspicion that a crime was committed and that he committed it. And somebody, 3 a.m., in the middle of the road, in a Bentley, asleep with your, <laughs> with your brake lights on, is cause to at least investigate and see how what, it could be a medical. You know, it could be a well check. The police did report a smell of burnt weed. Actually, we, speaking of burnt weed, we had a, um, a new case that came out. The smell of marijuana is not necessarily enough to expand the search of a car. But that's uh, another issue for another day. They smell burnt weed coming from the vehicle as well as a weed residue inside the console. So they see weed residue. A styrofoam cup included an alcoholic beverage was also present. So we got a rolling party. When asked if there were any weapons or anything illegal in the SUV, Kodak said, just we." When he went to go run his information, the cop noticed that uh, white powder falling from the wrapper. <laughs> the officer then saw his mouth full of white powder. <clears throat> you know, what the fuck? You know, this is what you call a substance abuse problem. The substance was tested and confirmed to be cocaine, despite the fact that Kodak claiming it was Percocet. I don't think it really matters if it was fucking Percocet. No, these are perks, man. You know, I'm good. I got a back problem. Additionally, when the officers searched the wrapper, they found clear baggie with a small amount of substance left in his pocket. Officers added that the Codex Bentley had visible passenger side bumper and door damage, which may have involved in a crash. The vehicle's exterior and interior, as well as the narcotics found, were photographed for evidence. Blah, blah, blah. Let's just kind of recap 
of this uh, 3 a.m. scene on the side of the roadway. You got excessive tint on the windows, asleep at the wheel, you've got evidence of a crash, and you're blocking traffic at 3 a.m. Okay, that's enough to just get you arrested right there. Then you inside the vehicle, you've got drugs, and I, I don't see anything that there was a weapon, and thank God there wasn't a weapon because that could be bad. But the problem also is the fact that he was on federal paper at the time on what they call supervised release. And when you're on supervised release, you're not, number one, you probably aren't supposed to be out at 3 a.m. Number two, you're probably not supposed to be doing perks or cocaine. He did receive an additional charge of probation violation related to the federal case, which was also included in the report. Now, let, let's just back up a little bit. So he's on federal paper. He gets busted with cocaine and perks or whatever he's got. And so where does he go from here? He was released on $5,000 bail. But it's clearly, I mean, he's only 26 years old. 26 years old. Let's kind of, should we go through his criminal history a little bit? Because that's going to frame where this case is going. Because he's now charged with possession of cocaine, tampering with physical evidence, in other words, trying to eat it, <laughs> and improper stop, stand, or park. Or who cares about that? So in 2015, he was arrested for kidnapping, battery, and other charges. While that was pending, he got arrested for a marijuana possession charge. In 2016, he got arrested for sexual battery from a woman reportedly accompanied him to a hotel after a show at Treasure City. In 2016, arrest for weapons charges. So I just, it doesn't sound like he had any weapons on him. But, you know, when you have a felony and you're riding dirty, the riding dirty we can deal with, the guns we can't deal with because there are hard minimums on a gun charge. So if you're going to be riding dirty, don't do anything you need to do to be armed. You know, why would you be armed? You could have a buddy be armed or hire a security guard or just fucking stay home. <laughs> so 2016, arrest for uh, weapons possession. He owned a Glock and they arrested him for weapons possession by a, a convicted felon and marijuana. In 2016, arrest for, in Broward County, again, open warrants, charges of false imprisonment. At least he's creative. When he, while he was in jail for the arrest and the outstanding warrants for the criminal sexual misconduct case in Florence, you know, the other arrests were brought to light and then that kind of inhibited his release from jail. So three months after that, in August 2016, he was sentenced to a year of house arrest and five years probation. So that means he'd be on probation until 2021, right? A month later in September, he pleads no contest to a possession case that was sentenced to 120 days. And so he was, re so he did that 120 days in 2016. But then in November he was released. But guess what? He couldn't just go. He had to get extradited to deal with the sexual assault charge in South Carolina. While that was pending, he bailed out on hundred thousand dollars, you know, in South Carolina. And in 2017, he violated his conditions of release. In May 2017, angry outburst, sentencing at the house violation. April 21, accused of grabbing his anger management counselor by the arm after she threatened to call 91 when he refused to leave a session. <laughs> okay, so you say I got anger problems? Fuck you! What the hell? I mean, Your Honor, I've said this before. Uh, Your Honor, uh, I cannot uh, in good conscience place my client in anger management. Well, why not, Mr. Rivers? Because it'll piss him off. Five days later, he was found guilty on five counts of violating his house arrest. May 4th, he was sentenced to 364 days in prison with possibility of virtual release if he completed a life skills course. You know, all we got to do is just get him a little education. Life skills. January 2018, arrested for weapons and drug possession and child neglect. Don't like the child neglect, but the weapons and drug possession, that sounds like a party. Arrested for grand theft of a firearm and two charges of possession of weapons and ammo by a Florida delinquent adult. 2018, sentenced uh, January for arrest, did a year in prison for the remaining charges stemming from his January arrest, got credit for 90 days, blah, blah, blah. May 2019, arrest for weapons possession. You know, when you have multiple convictions, multiple felonies, weapons are your kryptonite. You, you cannot possess a firearm. There are hard mandatory minimums. Uh, Kodak Black and three others were apprehended by U.S. Customs and Border Agents while trying to cross into Canada. Okay, moron, your bus is leaving. You can't go into Canada with a firearm. 
First of all, you really can't go into Canada if you got a felony. You think a guy looking like that and with his record is going to be able to get into Canada without being searched? Not going to happen. Step ones are the most comfortable underwear I've ever made. They're high performance and you can go about your day and you don't even know you're wearing them. And they're made from a viscose fabric that's derived from organic bamboo. Let's start there. And then they also have these panels that are non-sweat, no chafe panels. For a limited time, if you put in Bruce Rivers as you check out, you'll get 25% off. Nobody else gets that deal. And ladies, you get some of these for your guy, he's going to absolutely love these. And it's a risk-free proposition because if after 30 days, if you don't like them, you can return them. Excellent Christmas present, especially if you have a stocking and you just fill it jam-packed full of step one. Your guy will love you. So step one, get some. So he paid twenty dollars to $40,000 bond and then walked out of the jail with a fan of cash covering his face. Then less than a month later, he was arrested on weapons charges in Miami. What the hell? <laughs> Why not? You know, I'm not going to be without my guns. Uh, just before he was set to take the stage at a hip-hop music festival and Rolling Loud, he was apprehended by U.S. Marshals for state and federal firearms violations following what been an extensive investigation. Here, here's the problem that he's going to get going forward. You get enough of these, you know, and all of a sudden you get on federal paper and you get another federal, federal offense and they can do what they call an 851. An 851 is kind of a career criminal kind of deal where you get higher mandatory minimums for various crimes. I mean, it's not a career criminal, but it is kind of like that. Anyway, 2019, federal sentencing, Kodak Black pleaded guilty to the federal weapons charge, admitting to giving false information in connection with the January 2019 gun purchase. So you, you can't lie on a gun application. I don't know what he put down, but that he didn't have any criminal history. I mean, how easy is that to fucking check? I mean, really. And he was sentenced to three years and 10 months. Behind bars, he had heated confrontations with guards at the high-security prison in Big Sandy in Kentucky, which prompted him to file a lawsuit that accused the prison staff of beating him and restraining him for hours with no access to the bathroom. I've had that happen to somebody, actually. His third album, Bill Israel, was released in November 2020 while he was still incarcerated. So good, he's able to make money while he's in jail. January 21, Trump sets Kodak Black free. You know, there are people that you'd want to pardon. Generally, you'd probably pardon somebody without a lengthy criminal history. But who cares? I like pardons no matter who gets them. So Trump pardons him. Then he drops the lawsuit. However, while Trump's grant of clemency was a welcome relief for the rapper, it did not shield him from the sexual assault charge pending against him in South Carolina. So he had to go back and deal with that. He eventually settled that case for a suspended 10-year sentence, according to court records, and was placed on... 18 months of probation served no additional time. Sometimes they do that to avoid a trial, you know, because when you have a sexual assault case, if somebody's been sexually assaulted, it's traumatic for them to go through a trial. But in this case, they struck a deal, a very lenient deal, actually. I apologize this happened, and I'm hopeful we can all move forward, so said Kodak Black. He later posted a message on social media about the resolution of the case saying, I ain't have to come off no money. So, um, I don't know, I don't exactly know what that means, other, other than maybe I didn't have to pay for a lawyer to try the case, I don't know. But in January 22, but he was arrested on New Year's Day in Pompano Beach for, on a trespassing charge. Officers claimed in a police report that Kodak had been at a housing complex, despite having been banned from the property by the housing authority of Pompano Beach. However, in February 22, 2022, he was shot in the leg in West Hollywood, California after a fight involving members of his entourage that broke out at a restaurant where Justin Bieber was having an after party. And then he was arrested in July of 2022. He was pulled over in Broward County after an officer ran the plates, found its registration was expired, and according to the report, they smelled... What did they smell? What do you think they smelled? Marijuana. <laughs> they followed a strong odor of marijuana and decided to search the vehicle, at which point they found 31 oxycodone pills and more than seventy-five or $74,000 in cash. Uh, and he said it was prescribed for his pain relief. <laughs> so his lawyer said he pr provided Broward County state attorneys with the evidence of the, uh, the prescription that he is moving to quickly resolve the charges, which include trafficking in oxycodone and illegal possession of a controlled substance. We're going to tell you what he thinks about... Um, different types of pills in a second. And in February 2023, in the Broward County pill case, Kodak allegedly violated his bail terms by failing to show up for a drug test. 
you know, we always like to give everybody their due, so let's hear what he has to say about the drug test. Look, well, when I look at I'm like, well, I, all of a sudden, now y'all want to put this shit as a random, I missed a drug test. When I'm, nobody tried to, no, nobody notified me. And it, where nobody notified me, nobody ain't hit my lawyer, nobody ain't hit me, nobody sent no emails and put no hazard alert, like, he need to come, tell him come, and none of that shit. So who can argue with that, honestly? I mean, I don't know. Where, I don't know where or how this was filmed. If you, and if you look here, look at the evolution of his of his face over the last several years. Look at that very first photo. Looks like a decent young man. He's got very little, if any, face tats. And and if you look at the evolution of him, it just looks like he's been through the mill with drugs. It just looks like he's been through the mill with drugs. And, you know, and, th and that appears to be the common denominator in every single one of his brushes with law enforcement. Let's take a look at the explanation of Super Gremlin, which will kind of explain a little bit of his, what his mindset is. Let's talk about Super Gremlin. Yeah. What made you name it that and what made you make that record? I ain't gonna lie, I was I was in the studio and I was just I was just going off right, and then like the first bar that came to my mind like when it when it came to that when it came to that part, I didn't put fake, but I still ate it because I'm criminal. I really ain't want to say that shit, you know what I'm saying? But it just like that was the first thing that came to mind. You didn't want to say gremlin? I, I ain't want to say the. I knew the perk was fake, but I still ate it because I'm a gremlin. But that shit was just hard as shit though. I just knew that bitch was, what that bitch was gonna do. Right. I'm saying, but I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, really, I ain't want to say that shit though. I ain't, ain't want to say that shit. We call that self snitching a little bit though, because if if he knows the perk is fake, then we know it is what probably fentanyl, right? Cause my dog, my, my dog, so and shit, he be telling me like, fam, like, motherfucker, look up to you at, like, nothing, no more, like, you up around, what you calling that motherfucker gonna do that shit. The, the chances I get even like performing that whole um, shit, like I start the mic and bass and shit, like man, fam, like I ain't on that bus bullshit. Like, don't please don't take that and mm. try to like do no shit like. <laughs> Essentially, what he's saying is, you know, we, one of his buddies is telling him that as he's performing these songs, he's sort of making it sound like it's cool to take fentanyl pills, and these kids look up to him. And they do, you know? And so you create a culture where it's okay to, you know, and these fentanyl, let me tell you this, fentanyl is killing people all over the country, all over the fucking country. I have a lot of those cases right now as I speak. And, you know, and he, and he basically is saying he, he'll stop sometimes and just say, don't do that. Well, how about cut it off at the beginning and sing about something else? It's like maybe he can push some pee, you know, positivity. And you, and you heard him say that, you know, he didn't even like the lyrics, but it was hard. You know, it was, it was, it resonated with him or, anyway, he needs to quit doing fucking drugs. I mean, you're going to wind up one day seeing that Kodak Black overdosed, you know, I, and I hate to say that. I hate to even say that, but he's so reckless and it's like, you're either in jail or you're dead. And that's what I see all the time with drugs. You know, people... Uh, become reckless, people become violent, people can become self-destructive. And we, and we saw it in my last video when we talked about Hunter Biden. You know, I mean, it, it is just such a cycle of, you know, yeah, it takes my health. Yeah, it takes my money. Yeah, it's going to take my freedom. But God damn it, I got to have more of it, you know. And people just, you know, if, if you know somebody that needs some help, get them some fucking help. And like I said, sometimes law enforcement the interactions will save lives. And they, they really can because it'll make you change. Otherwise, you have to sit. And if you're sitting in a jail cell, guess what you're not doing? You're probably not doing drugs. Are there drugs in jails and prisons? Of course there are. But not like there are on the outside. So this has just been our little update on, on uh, Kodak Black getting arrested for cocaine again and, and – um, you know, I, he's got so much criminal history. We just detailed it all for you. And it's it, at some point, you got to be tired of dealing with this shit, you would think. So our heart goes out to Kodak Black. Let's hope you fucking get sober, man. 
and uh, and let's just because uh, we you know, there's plenty a lot of people want to hear your bars. Focus on the music, not the drugs. See you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers. Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, sign up for Patreon, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm part of Bruce Rivers is broke, that your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers is broke, that your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god?